When it sees Hati Artis the cut you on, Yarkana at Kautli Yiji at the Yakonika to saw. Has to saw Kurko on to play the heen after us the good to a archi. Play the heen. But stuck the heen away to a ach. Yea, Kurka. Deo to a ach. Chakutake. Deo to a ach. Chakutake. Uh, great to see everybody. Thanks for coming. We're going to start this evening by naming birds. Uh, I only want them to be heard once. So someone says, like, let's say, for example, we're doing land animals. And someone says, Segedi. A little while later, maybe a long while later, someone else says, Segedi. I will say Deo Tua Ach, or someone else could say Deo Tua Ach. That means we already heard it. So I'll put some of these phrases uh, down below. Oops, I got to change that. So this one is we already heard it. And then I might ask, uh, Chakutake, uh, another one. And this is a yes or no type of question. We'll talk about that today. Uh, so those are the phrases we'll probably use when we do these things. Uh, that's a good start. Some other things, if we had other types of games, I might say things, or if I'm asking someone to read, uh, I might ask something like, Adu Itsakuaha, whose turn is it? Uh, then there's some other things we could learn how to say as we go along. Uh, but one of the things is you can always say, Hoot, and it's, it's all gone, it's done, that's it. And that means you can't think of another one. It's totally okay. Nobody's winning, nobody's losing. The entire goal of this exercise is to give you a task and then to come back and see how many we can name. Sometimes when there's, we're in classes and we'll do like 40 names of things, which is wild. And that's awesome. But then at the end, we'll sort, and then what I would prefer, this is also a soft step into an immersive environment. Let's try not to speak English, so we don't need the long explanation. Oh, I was thinking of this one. And then just, just pause and just maybe think of another one. And if you say hooch, it's not like you got to get off the island. You know, you just, we'll come back around. I'll maybe look at you and see if you got one or jump in if you have another one. And when we start to feel like we're getting down there, I'll just say, uh, uh, I'll probably just say, just to cut you on. Uh, I do suck. Uh, all of you, whoever. So the reason I would say that is to say, we're not going to, we're going to go in this order. So here's number one, two, three, one through 12. We'll go in that order. And so I will try to put this little highlight on. Uh, I will put myself in last. I get to play, I get fun. And I will try to think of ones um, that I think are lesser known. Uh, and we are doing birds at Kaut uh, If you got some insects and stuff, I'm fine with that. There's usually not big, strong arguments about what is and isn't a bird. When we get into sea animals though, sometimes we get into some, some of them are, you know, Land otter, I think that's a land animal. So I would just usually say like, where does it eat? Where does it sleep? Those are two of the things that sort of, because a, a sea otter, I would consider a sea animal, not a land animal. A uh, frog, I don't know. But uh, again, if you want to plead your case, I would prefer all cases pled in Shingit. Uh, however, I might let some things slide. When we do things like, birds, name the birds, name the plants. 
I didn't tell you this, but please don't just say bird or plant. Although it's fine if it's on your list. I'm thinking of more specific ones, but it's totally fine. Okay. Any questions before we get started? Um, oh, um, mm -hmm. you say, uh, there's two things you could say for um that I think are pretty good to start with. Uh, the first one, let's we'll put it down here. Oh, well. So, oh, well, on its own, this is the most common word in the Tlingit language because it has a lot of functions. On its own, it means that is. So I say, nadak owe, tayakajet owe, yak owe. That's a table, that's a chair, that's a boat. But it also has these other functions that pairs up with a whole bunch of things to turn into other things. And if I'm just talking, like I'm making some kind of speech and I just wanna let you know I'm thinking or I'm still talking, or in some cases, I would like to talk. So I might say, talk away, you are away. We do our way, and then it, so the away is really a pause. It's also when you really analyze thing, it, it's used to say this thing, comma, this, because it gives you like a mental break, like we're talking about this other thing now. Uh, so it is that is, and I might run out of room here. Hold on. Maybe I'll make these guys a little smaller. Maybe. Oh, how about big? Okay, fine. Uh, so a way is that is. Uh, another one that works really well is ah, uh, which is yes. When you see people giving Klingit oratory, this is, and these are things, if you can get the um out of there, you'll just sound really Klingit, right? And it's like, um, uh, right? So, but if I just use those two I just showed you, Ah, Shangu Kedi. Oh, well. They just give you time to pause, which is really helpful. One last one. The word how, which is uh, well, not as in like a in the well. Let me turn this thing on. But, uh, like if someone says something to you, you're like, well, and you're just sort of saying that word so that you can think. So you say, ha. And again, if you listen to stories and speeches, they'll do that stuff all the time. And whenever you're using like how, sometimes they're switching to like a different, it's almost like we're in this scene, Raven's on the beach, Ha, ah, now Raven's out in a boat. It's almost like you sometimes switch in places. Any other questions? Oh, no. ah. oh yeah. Here's, here's another good one. Shka is like, a, let me think about it, right? So shka is a good one. I want these to be on the same page. Hold on. Pause for formatting. No. Or when I forget something, I use a hode. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a, a bunch of these, right? So shke, and shke is something like uh, you got to buy yourself some time to consider it, right? Kids are asking for something. Shke. And then you go consult with your partner and make sure this is what you want to do with the kids. Okay. Kune, uh, this is Sani. When someone says ade and they're in the audience, is that the same thing that you would use in this situation where, because sometimes in ceremonial, we, we have different meanings to words. 
Uh, Does it still say I'm here? Because you're someone's calling out my clan and I'm shouting Ade, and then just wondering. So the the first word was Awe, like short, and usually with a W. When the first vowel goes long, Awe, and it's usually a W as well. Awe. That's a formal ceremonial acknowledgement. And usually the clan knows who, so, like typically there would be like, let's say the clans have a house, have houses. Most houses have both a hitzate, the house leader and the natla, the house mother. They're usually the ones who should be saying, ah, well, not just any old person. But if you're the only one there from the clan, do it because you don't want them to call out your clan and make it seem like you're it's on your phone or whatever and you're checked out. Oh, well, that means like we're right here. We heard you. Yes, it's responding to the call, to the acknowledgement, especially. And the way you remember, like, oh, well, as a term, is uh, somebody told me a story. There was a uh, Shengit elder who was a high person in their clan. He would be one of the ones who says, oh, well, whenever they mention their clan or his name. But sometimes they would go very long and he'd take a little nap. And so someone would mention the clan and someone would give him a little elbow. Oh, well, right? And then maybe just do it straight like that. But he usually just kind of chime in. Well, so he went with, uh, went to church with his wife and he fell asleep mm -hmm. during the thing. <laughs> so she gave a little nudge and he was like, oh, well. So, I don't know if that's a true story. I heard it somewhere. Okay, but that's a good question. Now, to the business at hand. This is our list. Uh, try When we do this exercise, try not to look at any lists you have written down. Try not to, uh, we're just sort of seeing what we can remember just for the act of doing it. And uh, if you forget some stuff, don't worry about it because we'll do it again. We'll even do the birds again. And then we'll do, you know, I like these little categories too because it's just kind of fun. Here we go. Ganook. Ganook, okay. Sky do. Kijuk. Kijuk, okay. Juni Shahid. Uh, Kuk. Kuk, okay. Kaskatin. Kachanes. Kachanes, okay. Sani. Tsikaini. Tsikaini, okay. Kaskin. Ayash. Ayash, okay. Each da. Ishk. Ishk, okay. Kachan, son. Kitchet. Kitchet, okay. The Kitkiyan. Lach. Okay. A suck again. Okay. Yes, Kaku. Okay. Sheesh. Kachkun. Yuk. Yuk. Ekecha. Kanachaya yada. Shaya. Shaya sege. Shaya. Deo tu achoa. Chakutake. Bigakia. Oh, you can. Ah, it hoa. Hintake and the kinagah. Utsaka Kushta Yegi. Oh, you can. Yeah, away. Kushta Yegi. Sky the U. Katu. Katu. The Kecha. Juni Shahit. Kinda Chunit. Yeah, away. Kaskatin. Sukan. Sayanaka. Sukan. Sugan, yak eh, yeah, oh, sani. Yes. 
Sani. <laughs> Oh, Dutch, 
Cisco. Yeah, oh, it's Cisco. Your cake and cheese. Tachwech. Tachwech, yeah, oh, it. Dach a hosatina yagi. A hunch, yea, oh, gee, yeas. She had a higher hat cruetin. Hat cruetin, can the carony. Usk away, yeas, yah. Clack, kiss yeas, oh, it. Tachwech. That's it. It's a war, Kinder Trinet. Kinder Trinet, they were to a Hita. See Kinder Trinet. Hey. They were to a Hit. Um, what's that? You were Sarkas. Kun Kate. Yeah, Kate. Kate Lady. Kate. 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 Tawuk, ye awa, ye awa. Ah, it's just sugar. Ah, yeah, I'll call it Cisco. Ah, I'll call it Cisco. Has has Cisco. Oh, yeah, I'll call it Cisco. 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 Ah, Cisco. Oh, nak. Cisco. Talk on. Okay. Mm. Oh, cock, cock, yeah, away. What's up? Ah, they are too. Ah, yeah, what's up? What's up? Ah, what's up? Ah, 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 you can take night touch for a hurry with egg and cheese. Ah, that was awesome. We did lots of birds. So, like, collectively, I'm always amazed at the brain power. Like, we just keep sort of cycling through any thoughts, questions, reflections on the process, things you're curious about. I, I have to confess that as I, as I was looking up for bird names in the dictionary, uh, the, dic the dictionary of Tlingit, page 508 <laughs> to 510 has a wonderful long list of birds. <laughs> so, <laughs> gonna cheat for putting that together. Yes, and if. Um... Let's see. Well, let's look at this too. Is that on uh, your dictionary, Kune? The one no. Oh, so the one I'm working on does not have a categorical category. Oh, it's the Sea Alaska one. Yes. And also, uh, let me, I don't know why this is looking at. Because I know the Inland Tringa Dictionary had a section for it. That's where I got a lot of my birds. Yes. So we will look at uh, this for a moment. If you're not in the interior, you might not be familiar with this dictionary, but this dictionary has the most nouns of any dictionary out there. Uh, it's written in the Lear and Ritter orthography, but we went over that the other day. So if you were to look at, uh, sorry if that scrolls really fast, a word like this, Katine. So the, the way you transcribe this 
is the I with the little hat is a high, long vowel. So we would write E, high toned E, Katim. So these are some things just to sort of, and same with right above it, the XH for the H, you convert that to an underline on that letter right before it. And then this would be Katim. Uh, and those are, oh, there was a Kachsatan Jin. Well, it's a little bit different. It's not team, but it's a similar type of verb. Okay. Um, but, oh, what was I going to show you? So if you look through the table of contents on here, this has a main section. So the very first section is by categories. So we could go to creatures. And then we could go down to birds. I bought what, let's see. Well, these are at Kautla Yiji. At is just generally a bird. Kutkayedi uh, is a little uh, nestling still in the nest. Cheat. Nobody said cheat. Yeah, Did anybody say that? That's uh, uh, but I think we had Tsakh. I don't know what a canvas back is. We, we didn't have that one. Lots of, we, we heard, I heard douche, gah, let's just go oh, through. I heard pintail gah, I learned that one. Oh, oh really? Yeah, that, that was the uh, gah, uh, yadi. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Sounds like we just focused on ducks. <laughs> well, it's funny because like, yeti. you might start hearing yadi and you might think, are they just throwing yadi on every name? Yeah. <laughs> so, because you're like, not just a dog, but also a puppy and a kitten. And, you know, but some of them actually have that, the yeti, and then that's just part of their name. So, yeah, like it, because gao yeti would also be a duckling, any kind of duckling. I know, I was ready to act it out in case anyone was like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so what we can go through here and you'll see like lots of, uh, and ducks, like so many different birds that are out there. So we can probably go through and find, oh, Tuch Gauch is a pretty important one. Uh, when you find those, there's usually some salmon underneath them. Uh, and that's also the one that Raven shot and skinned and had his mother climb in. I think we had all these. Merganzer, that one's always fun. Some of them have multiple names as well. Oh, Atz, Atz, that's the one that the Seattle Seahawks are, I think, is what a Seahawk is, if I understand that right. Uh, Kijuk and Kijuk are technically sometimes not considered the same thing, but I'd have to look at my notes because one of them is a hawk, like a mountain hawk, and the other is a golden eagle, but they sound very similar. Uh, oh, Yanashkone is that one. We a lot of the owls, I think. Yeah, I was kind of shocked to see the disc in there. It's like, what? Right? Uh, Ashitai. And then there's a bunch of these little ones. Oh, Yakutsuki Itzati. Sounds pretty fun. Because it's a smart bird. That's what it means, the smart bird. <laughs> I think most people, when they look at a pigeon, they're probably not thinking, you are intelligent. But I think when they get heard about it, they're like, yeah, you tie like a little note to it and send it to your friend. They're like, what? That's a smart bird. <laughs> so, some of them have a history. I think it's got to have a history. Because when I look at them today, I'm like, what are you doing? Uh, I like that one. Forgot that one. Sedakida, I like that one because it's called Kolea in Hawaiian. And I would see them in Hawaii and say their Shinket name and see if they would talk to me. Gutsyaduchi. Oh, Khustayija. I didn't, I don't think we said that one either. Seta. Oh, Khatayiji. Oh, Khatayija is the one I know for that one. Shuk. Ah, tooch, soo. That's like, oh, just start throwing colors, right? Chach, tati. Kuyech, that one's fun. 
these ones kuyech they uh they could speak um tagish and then they'll tell you when somebody's coming to your camp they're called that because when you hear them singing to you somebody's thinking about you what's the difference between satsuki and then um also I th so some communities don't use both, but I think tati is just a bird. It's generally a bird, but so is at kautigiji at. I think that's more. When you start saying tati, I don't know if people are going to be thinking of also the bigger like eagles and ravens and stuff. At kautigiji at would include all of them. For me, I think tati starts to get like probably smaller than an eagle. And it is a little one that could fit in a single hand. They're little songbirds. But not all communities use them like that. I think that's how it used to work because it's got the little diminutive suffix on it, which we'll talk about. Kun, that's a Dutchweedy thing. I should have known that one. Let's see. I thought that one was said. Did you say that one? Kun? No, Kin. Um, ah. Uh, tat, I don't think we had the junko. Kachanese, we had that one. Tati <laughs> I don't know what this black word is. Juk, juk. Shaki Khan, red on top of the head. Sounds cool. Um, yeah, huh. Jamasi. <laughs> this is a yellow, uh, but can you tell me how this yellow works? I'd say ketchuku. Isn't it like goat's pee or something? Dog like pee. Dog, dog, dog pee yellow. Yeah, so ketchuku is a color. You know, it's like a bright, little bright yellow. Awesome. That's so good. It's so good, you folks. Any other thoughts, questions? Pushek, master list of living things. Oh, uh, wonderful. Pages first. Ah. Oh, where where did you oh. find that? Uh, Pushek, or I can send it. Okay, that okay. I'll ask, I can ask her for a cup. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, if there's no other questions or thoughts about birds, that's really fun. So why don't we do this? We're going to take a little break and give you another task. Write or find four complete sentences that have to do with birds. Write it or find it. It's okay. Just look through the verb dictionary. Find a sentence talking about a bird. Go look up a verb and just, you know, and it doesn't, this doesn't have to be like the biggest, most important sentence ever written. You don't have to explain why a raven's important to clinky people. You don't have to write some story about some raven stealing hot dogs out of the back of a pickup where a kid was sleeping. Keep it short. As we sort of just more and more tasks, we're going to try and do a lot of different tasks this semester. At the start, it's just stuff to do. If you want to run it by me first, shoot me an email. I'm happy to look at stuff. But also, when we share things in here, it never has to be perfect or even correct. It's just an effort. And also, feel free to tell us the, the thing it and to tell us in English, because not all of us are going to understand if it's all in thing it yet. And just have fun. We're just thinking about birds because I like them. And I also think when I teach people thing it, We'd name animals and people would just name animals all day. Then we'd name water animals. People could do those a lot, like a whale and a killer whale and a fish. I'm like, okay, let's do some birds. And like, it gets real quiet. So I think it's good to think about them and then plants as well. We might do plants next, maybe next week. Mm -hmm. But for now, find or write for, and they don't have to be together. It's not a story. Don't try and translate any poetry in here. Just don't, I, like every year in intermediate clinket, I'll get students like, I want to translate this sauna. I was like, don't, don't do that. 
do that like a long time from now, just focus on being communicative. It's like metaphors are different in every language. So sometimes people have something, and this happens too, people like to write, think it songs, but they're writing from an English perspective. And so sometimes we've got to revisit it and say, this part isn't going to work. We've got to shift this part to something else. Okay. Uh, what do you guys need? How about eight minutes? Come back in eight minutes. So my clock says 635. So I don't know, close to quarter till. Let's, let's just take a 10 minute break. We'll start back up at quarter till and we will be looking at the little readings in Schlingit, then the beginning Schlingit workbook and starting to just move through that just to sort of review what all the concepts are in the workbook. Did we get the four sentences during the break? No, do those for Thursday. Okay. Do those, yeah, don't do anything on the break, but take a break. Okay. So those four sentences are for next class? Four sentences are for the next class. Okay. Yeah, don't. <laughs> Nobody freak Sorry, out. Sorry, I was really stressed out about that. <laughs> Did I not say that? Sometimes, like things, sometimes things are complete thoughts in my brain. Oh my <laughs> or I thought I said the next time. I thought I swear I'm gonna look at the tape tonight. I will see. No, for Thursday. Just for Thursday, not anything right now. Renee. Uh, uh, Gus. Uh, uh, Bruce, could you talk to us a little bit about the article that appeared in the Empire? Oh, oh yeah, Empire. yeah, that was fun. Good to teach.
Okay. Sheesh. So I think the things I'd like to sort of cover now are just a quick like look at some of the resources to sort of really think about taking a deep dive into. Uh, and we'll go probably in kind of reverse chronological order, like then just in terms of we'll look at the oldies, then we'll look at some of the newbies, and then we'll sort of kind of go from there. So the Clinkett Verb Dictionary is amazing. And it's really wonderful to sort of learn, just continue to learn how to use this book. Um, it's out of print, so a lot of us are using the electronic ones. And the electronic ones, like depending, you can open it, whatever your computer uses to look at PDF files. Usually there's a way to push Windows F or on the Mac it's Command F. And it brings you to the search bar. And I could just enter bird and I'll see what happens. They're going to aim at the small birds and hit them with rocks. So an important thing to remember here in this class that we're in, no matter what you know, it's good enough. Because you can go and say, I couldn't write a sentence, but look, I found this one. Okay, that's a cool sentence. Because we could take a look, you know, depending on what level you're at with your language learning, you could say te teen tsk shagach du zu. And there's a bunch of stuff, like you can just continue to come back to look at that. So te, uh, can anybody, anybody recognize any parts of this sentence? I'm going to zoom way in. Te teen tsk shagach du zu. Yeah. Te. Te is rock. There's the rock, right? Sitsku, little bird. Sitsku is a little bird. I probably put an apostrophe right there. It's okay. Now I got two, two words left. What about teen? Did you hear that one before? Well, I heard it in the uh, boss of teen. Yeah, it's teen. Well, so there is a verb to see, but this is just teen on its own, and especially after it follows a noun, with, with that noun, te teen, with a rock, yak teen, with a boat, kuhida teen. If I put kuhida in there, now people are going to throw pencils at birds. Like, that's a bad sense, right? This is where, like, now all the famines come and all the bad stuff come. So then that leaves us with shagach du zu. So sometimes if you're just looking for something to do, because I know like studying can get sometimes you're like, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Then your brain gets tired of one thing. So it shift to another one. Just start looking through and look at some of these sentences and find stuff to be curious about. Or find ones to be like, oh yeah, I can memorize that. And it's hard to like really get a good pattern out of here. But you know, the verb itself, sha is a head. Zu is to throw something like a missile. So this would be throwing something with the intention, like I'm throwing a rock so that it's a weapon. If that's, if I'm using this verb, is a good verb for snowballs? Although don't, I don't know, don't hit people in the head with a snowball. Maybe you could take this sha off and now it's just a missile. You're throwing it to hit something. So uh, just in terms of like how to use it, but you can just go in and like, if you look on the left-hand side and your PDF reader might be different and on your screen, this might be small, uh, but now I could go down and here's peck. So I'm, it's just finding everything with bird in it. So this thing has been scanned. The text recognition stuff has been done all for you. Uh, I have this when I was learning to get, but. Uh, it's wonderful, right? So now you get ganda da goo goo. Well, you could say goo. I would say goo goo. Asta a gook. So the verb is built into its name. And so a gook means to peck on something. Oh, and then the as is the tree. Yeah. And then here you have gun da. So around the wood. 
as is tree, gun is usually chopped up wood, like firewood especially. So that's one way you can use it, is you could just enter. Do you have a question, Ricardo? All right, so I was wondering how this booth is different than Google, like a start, right? Or go yeah, so this, like, there has to be, there's a couple things that need to be on there, actually. There's an object, a subject, a classifier, and the root. However, there could be a situation where you're saying gook, but that would be commanding someone to, like if you had a woodpecker under your command, you might be able to command it to peck the something. But yeah, gook, like gook day. And there's, there's a whole bunch of words where you get it from context. Like every language has this, right? Like if I say the English word bow, I am talking about my cousin bow. Of course I'm talking about my cousin bow. I was talking about like a bow and arrow or a bow that you put in your hair, right? And so Schengen has this as well. Usually we get it from context. If you, if you hear a gook and then it seems like it's in a spot where a verb should be, then it's just a sort of, it's a matter of grabbing those, but it happens all the time because you have teen, our teen, sit, our sit teen. So good questions. So the other thing you can do is if you encounter some Schlinget uh, word, like let's say we're looking at some sentences here. Let me show you. Here's uh, a story. I said, we're gonna listen to this basket bay, B-A-Y. Uh, and if we just go down here and we'll find, um, he uses a lot of big words. So let me find uh, this one isn't too well. Let's see. I'll go up a little bit. So if I go up and I find a verb, that I think I might recognize. Uh, here's one. So here I would see this IU Ze. Sorry, I'm trying to zoom way in. I can't get that. IU Zeit Right? Like, let's say yeah, what, another activity you could do is there's these books that are out that have the translations in there. So the thing gets on one side, the English is on the other. We're locating a lot of the audio so you could listen to it. Another step is if you said, okay, are you zeit wudutlyech? If someone translated that for you, which you have the translations in here, uh, they used it for a ladder. People used it for a ladder. Can you get to that translation on your own? Like you already know what the translation is. So that gives you a lot of things to help. But there's a couple of things I would look for. As you start sort of studying Klingit enough, when you see zeit, you're like, it sure looks like the word for ladder with some thing on there. Okay? So you should be able to sort of get pretty close to that. It takes a lot of theorizing and guesswork and prediction. And sometimes being wrong, it's not a big deal at all. Uh, but then we get to, a lot of times, one of the games you could play, find the verb, print this story out, Circle, just circle the verbs. Like that's a verb, that's a verb. That sure looks like a verb. And then as you sort of go back through and you say, can I figure out what that verb is? So if I wanted to go find this verb in the Clinket Verb Dictionary, how would I do it? What do you think? Um, I'll tell you what, like, so, some of these older texts are wonderful, but you cannot search for really an underlying X. I keep writing to Adobe. I was like, Adobe, do it for us. There's little tiny people, but do it all. You can copy and paste it from what you can find. Yeah, you can try wududliyech and see if something comes up. Okay, so wududliyech. So let's go back to the verb dictionary. Hold on, let me. Navigate. So we're back. Oh, no. uh. Sorry, and maybe uh, I can talk to you later. I see now on the side, I was able to get that H, like the letters on the side, and I have a Mac. But how did you get like bird 
like when you were searching and then that side panel so changed. For Mac users that are using preview, you can go up into the top right. I don't know if you folks can see that because maybe there's some stuff from Zoom that's in the way, but usually in the top very right side of that window is a search panel, a little magnifying glass. Command F should also get you there. For a lot for Windows-based computers, it, it was the window key in F. It's been a decade since I've used Windows computers. But there is a way to search, and you could search in all kinds of things. If you've got a phone, it might be a little different. You might have to click somewhere where there's three dots, but usually you can get to the search window. And so if we went up there and we type W, and here's one of the tricks of searching for Klingit in the Klingit verb dictionary is they would have written it O O D O O. Even, but now we would write those short because they are short. You don't really say wu du tlikas. You say wu du tlikas, right? So there's wu du, we got that. And then we could get a DL. Sorry, Khune, that it looks a little more like that might, I just have two, three out of 23. So it doesn't show me any of these wonderful ways that it's being used on the side. So maybe I need to get what you have. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, this is just preview uh, for those of you who are Mac users. So it should, if you're opening in, uh, PDF. I, I think sometimes Adobe Acrobat is a little bit more powerful, but it does, it will not differentiate between a high tone and a low tone vowel. So if you enter a high tone A, it's just going to show you every A out there. Sometimes it's handy. You add the I. But if we look at all these wududly things, hey, we got a wududly thing. Here is uh, wududly fast to uh, fast from something. Like uh, this would work for like, I'm not going to eat pork for a month or I'm not going to eat this kind of food for it, it works well for like Lent and stuff like that. But it is also uh, from a Shlingit standpoint, there were times when someone's like, I'm in mourning, my father passed away, I'm not eating anything off the beach for a whole year to show people how much I'm in mourning. Uh, the next would doodly. Whoa, yeah, we found that verb. That's the verb we're looking for, which is pretty wild. But this one means to make someone, they adopted me. They made me, they adopted me as their child. There's a major hint there, but it's kind of a little bit different, but it is the exact same verb. This would be the verb, not this, this verb would not be the correct one, I don't think, to use. We brought them into our clan and gave them a name. This was, I took that baby in as my child. That's what this one is specific. Or somebody did. We'll see what the next wududli is. Wududli was to go around asking. Okay. Wududli ka, wududli kush. Oh, to use sorcery to bewitch somebody. Well, would do the heats. Um, some people borrowed our table. That's a cool one. Okay. Is it specific that sorry, that's a really good example of to tables? Or is that just the act of borrowing? That was just borrowing. Borrow. No. I'm going to tell you what this would do is. And we'll get to the parts that are there, but would do means people did it somebody did it it's really the verb happened i think it does have this thing we call the fourth person we're not here really looking for that we're just sort of looking around at these wududly verbs okay what's next oh you usually get these little arrows too you can use those to cycle through wududly suck to connect uh wires poking them wududly hits to cook an entire seal, whole skin and everything. There's a verb for that, cooking something in its skin. It's wow. I don't know how to do it. We do the dick. They disagreed with each other. 
uh, Wutu Tlitsiki uh, ate it all up. Oh, Wutu Tlitsiki Yao. This Yao, sorry, Wutu Tlitsiki Yao. It's barbecued. Wutu Tlitsiki would be a barbecue thing. So Wutu Tlitsiki Zisk Tsuku, barbecued moose ribs. Delicious. Aww. Wudutli talk. Okay, so we're looking at these wudutlis, and and we could cycle through and see if we find it, right? The other thing we could do. So we had this for wudutli yech, y e underline x. So once we learn how to spot verbs, one of the next things we should be learning how to do is spot that verb root. If you see wudutli yech, you are going to learn to say that. Verb root is yech. I am going to look up yech. So what you do is we kept sort of talking like there are four vowels. Each of the vowels has four variations. Short, high, short, low, long, high, long, low. No matter what that vowel looks like, put it in the long, low form. High tone E, long, low form is E, I. If I scroll down to the the clink it to English section here, it's alphabetical. I'm gonna to go to the Y's, scroll, it goes E, 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 I, O, O, A, A. That's the order that they go in. It's going from the front of the mouth to the back of the throat. So I go down Y, E, I, K, X. So there's a couple of things that we get here. The next thing you'll learn how to do, and this is all step-by-step -step stuff. I like to teach Klingit. By five o'clock, I drink lots of coffee, so I get a little excited sometimes. But if I go too fast with stuff, always feel free to ask questions, talk about it. At the beginning of a semester, I usually like to do, here's a whole bunch of stuff we're gonna do. But don't think I'm asking you to know how to do this stuff already. It's just sort of saying, this is the process, Let's learn how to use these processes. So every semester about this time, people sometimes start to feel a little nervous and overwhelmed, but please don't. We'll get there. And we can always pause, adjust our direction. We have a group of people, right around 15 people, and we're gonna try and move at a pace that works for everybody. That means for some people, it's a little faster than they might like, for others, a little slower than they might like. We're gonna do a whole bunch of stuff. So once you see that it's yeh, you will eventually learn how to spot that the classifier is an L classifier because it's tle. And while it's tle, and you see tle right here, it's actually tle. And we'll, you'll, you'll know how to diagnose this stuff. It's, there's a whole bunch of steps and it's really fun, but you will become a Tlingit verb investigator, and you will know how to look this stuff up. I know it's tleyech because I know this word. But if you just, if you look up tleyech, you'll see to build or to make something. So I could say, if I want to say I did it, nadak chosheyech, I made a table. But if you say a table was made, nadak wududleyech. It would switch to that would do these thing. We'll look at all the reasons why in time. But if you have a noun before it with that underline X on there, zeitch, that's actually this verb, which is to use something or to make it into something. So there's two ways to interpret that verb. They took something like a log, and they made a ladder out of it. So you could say, a ladder was made. But I would probably think more as to use something. For example, there's a raven story, and they said, raven is in a stone house. He also uses a rock for a chair. So it's like you're using something 
for something. That's what this verb is. You're making something into it. That's why the yek, like I could make someone my child. They're not my child, but I could make them my child. And that's the verb for adopting. A lot of stuff, There's so much stuff you can do diving in. For now, like if you haven't used this text very much, just look through it. Read the sample sentences. There's a whole bunch of fun ones, like they're going to throw you into the boiler. They're real fussy with their food. Uh, I've, I've, what's that? I made furrows in my garden. I have furrows in my garden. That's, I made, for, okay. So sometimes you could just look through here. You'll find stuff that's interesting and then you'll find stuff that's useful. Look at the useful stuff a little closer. Like I can use the sentence. I could change the noun in here. Okay. Everybody good? One other thing, we're not going to take too close a look at it. You could find this on our class uh, webpage, clinkitlanguage.com, learning clinkit, intermediate clinkit. I can probably just change them all to shingit at some point, although that's going to be like a logistical nightmare, but I think it's time. Anyways, this is called, uh, it should be called Verb Notes by Jeff Lear. And this is like 800 pages of handwritten notes in a tablet. But what it has is it's by verb root. So if you, however you're viewing a PDF, you should be able to look at the table of contents. If you look at this on a mobile device, like a, a tablet or a phone, you got to scroll forever to get down to like the underlying GD and stuff. But for example, here's the y, letter Y. And I'll look up Y-E just to see if Yech is there. And I see it for make. So I can also look in here, and it's not the easiest thing to read because it's in cursive and it's kind of scribble all over the mind of a genius, like thinking about our language. And it's also, uh, sometimes that's not, you know, like that's very faded on the top. It's hard, just hard to read. And when you look at this, sometimes you click on here and you've got to scroll up a page. I'm not sure why that is. But if we go up here, here's Yech, uh, deadfall trap, building it, making it, carving it, built it, made it, used it for, made it into. Could be either one of those things. I took this tree, I made it into a mask. That, that verb will work. But you're not talking about making a mask, you're talking about making it in, from one thing to another or using it for something. I used this piece of paper for a mask, whatever. But the last thing I'll say about this one, and I'll put this on our class webpage under tonight's class, is there's uh, one time we were like in the end of the academic year and she asked, what can I do over the summer? I wanna stay involved in the language. And so there's all kinds of projects. We've got all these old texts that need to be retyped so we can search for an underline X. And, she, and I said, uh, if you're up for a big project, you could, hand, you could type out these 800 pages of notes. She did it. So the, the place, uh, I have it open here. So that's this. And so it, it is alphabetical. What it doesn't have, yet, which maybe we'll work on the next phase, is being able to click on the H's and click on the, go to the Y or whatever. Um, but this one is searchable, whereas the other one is absolutely not searchable, so. Fun stuff. Okay. Let's read some thing it translate. So we are looking at this. We already did this one. That's the way a shoe. To kick away heat with the kid. What is she laughing at? Her younger sister fell in the water. Is seek a quack, cut the car. Ah, to do she cut with the heat. Is that your daughter crying? Yes, her cat ran away or got lost. Aunt Uanuk a heat. Cash away to two or a scush out to car she. 
Uh, my son is angry. He didn't want to get his hair cut. So now we're going to look at a list of some things. I'll say them. Uh, maybe you guys can repeat. So you say a little thing for a while. I'll say it, you repeat. Oh, hang on. Let me fix this. Ah, to us, the goo. Ah, to us, the goo. It to us, the goo. It to us, the goo. Do to us, the goo. Do to us, the goo. Ah, to us, the goo. Ah, to us, the goo. Eat to us, the goo. Eat to us, the goo. Pass to to us a goo. So what do we have here? What do, what is what would this translate to? How could it be interpreted? Ah to us a goo. I want it. And and I need it. Not I have it. I like it. I like it. And just remember, English loves to use the word love. Oh man, I love donuts. Love coffee. Shlinget does not, it shouldn't work that way in Shlinget. As much as, as incredible as the Sikhan verb is, I would recommend using that for living things. I love my mom. I love you know, my spouse. I love my kids. Whatever. Love my cat. You love a cat, dog, whatever. Love an ice cream? No. What about it to us a goo? You want it. You like it. Do to us a goo. Or she? Or they? I am going, we're going to talk about this. They want it. Disclaimer I am not changing the finger language. If you look at the Thlingit verb dictionary, almost every single verb that's a third person is translated as he. If you look at sort of some of the beginning Thlingit stuff, they started to shift to he slash she because du is totally, it's not gender, right? Du, 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 du. It doesn't matter whether boy, girl, non-binary, a number of students have been pointing this out. They said, well, even if you put she, he, you're forcing it into English. It's like, well, yeah, that's a good point. So I am using they, and then the plural form is they all. It might be a little awkward, but English doesn't have a good way to take care of that. Them, them all. They're them alls. I couldn't figure out how to do that last one. I went with them alls. And People could come at me for it. They already are. Because this upsets people. And I understand. But I, it does not affect thing. It, it's how we translate it into English. That's the only thing it affects. Um, we would have seen this previously, like throughout, like before seeing it like this would be he, she, or it, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Just fine. But in this case, it's this is not an it. Yeah. If you think your dog is a her or him, that's totally fine dog, your cat, your bird. But if you're just like, and you can, you can humanize things. You see it in stories all the time. But by classical thing, it, like if a porcupine likes it, ah, uh, we'll get to that. Don't worry about it. But that's the non-human third person. Mm -hmm. is the human third person. Mm -hmm. So it's not gendered, but it is usually human specific. Mm -hmm. So my dog has du. Mm -hmm. I don't know. She seems like a she seems like a du rather than an a. Uh. Just a single a. Single a. Okay. Hot to us a goo. We want it. Yeah. I think there's like some Garth Brooks song going through my mind right now for some reason. Ye to us a goo. Y'all. Yeah. yeah, let's go with y'all. Whether it's y'all, you all. I had a friend who's from uh, 
Pennsylvania, and he say use. What are you guys doing later? But then it has used guys. Okay. Uh, Here, they, them. Again, like it's this. <laughs> we're still gonna figure out like this, and, and especially for the possessive. But it's the same way with uh, this happened to me in another class the other day. I was like, "You guys did a great job," or no, I didn't think I didn't say. I was like, "Congratulations on your school." And the person I was talking to said, "It wasn't just me." I was like, no, I was mean, use all, use, I don't know how, y'all's school, you all's school, uses school. Anyways, <laughs> but the more important part, ach, e, du, ha, ye, haste. Right at, right there at the front. My, your, their, our, y'all's, them all's. Figuring out which pronoun you're gonna use, and we're gonna go through each of these pronouns, so that eventually when you look at a verb, as soon as you see, ah, you know which one it is. You just know which one it is. You could switch that over to, for person. We're gonna get there. What about these ones? Ah, e, du, ha, yi, haste, chet, wa, e, hu, uhan, yuhan, has. What are the differences between these? The one on the, the column on the left, left are possessives. Yes, they show possession or relation. I'm sort of leaning towards calling them relational pronouns now because you know, on your mom, right? And so, but I don't know. Anyways, ach, i, du, ha, ye, hasti. These would usually have some noun or phrase after it. My arm, your arm, their arm, our arms, y'all's arms, them all's arms, in a little string. What about on the right? Are those the independent? Yes, so these are what we call independent pronouns. They are not linked to anything grammatically. Wuhan, Yuhan, Hus. Me, you, them, us all, you all, them all. The, the ways you would use this is maybe in a verbless phrase. Ya duchet, there's no verb there. I am here, even though there's a verb in English, not in Shengit. Ya duchet, ya du, we do hus, we do, uh, well, I can't say we do Wuhan because we're not over there. That would be weird. Um, but just sort of also like pointing out who you're addressing as well. It's us. We are Shukachati. Tashtakat Yohan. Every single one of you all. We're sitting there at the Shingit. Whenever that gets built, who's going to build that one? And we're in the Klingit coffee house, and I'm ordering my coffee. I want black coffee. They, however, want tea. So that's how these ones are used. We'll look at a lot of examples. What's the um, linguistic term for that category again on the right? Independent. They are also used to just identify, like, uh, we do has, so like, there they are. You knock on the door, I do so. It's me. Yeah. Thank you. This is Sangi. Do you say Gunas Chish, you are, you won, or do you reverse it and say you won Gunas Chish, thanking everybody? Oh, I would say either way. So if, if it's, I guess if it's near the end of what I'm saying, I would say Gunas Chish, Yuhan, 
because I don't have to get anybody's attention. If I have to kind of get their attention a little bit, I might say, to cut you on. Goodness, cheese. So that it's just saying, calling them out. Hey, y'all. Thank you. Question. All right. Who wants to read this one? Uh, hut. Can I say that uh, one I just say by myself? Hut. I at Ahoy do yadi ashat. Click Achlahu Ahoy. Sheesh. I at a quay do yadi ashat. Click Achlak Awe. How do we interpret this? Is that right? Is that is that it? Your dad, your child, your auntie. Oh, That's I say do yadi, do yadi. There's the yadi. It art do yadi. So this, like this little reading thing, is really cool. There's lots of really neat things. So if we moved, all oh, right, let's do the whole thing first. Maternal. Yeah, your paternal aunt, your father's sister. So in classical Klinka culture, if I was Shukach Adi, my father was Kagwantan, any Kagwantan lady, female, I could call Ach aunt, my auntie on my father's side. It's not just biological, right? but there's an auntie on your father's side. Akwe. Is that your auntie? Do yadi ashat. What do we got? They, baby, her child. Right? And so again, there's no gender in that pronoun, but we switch it and it's an auntie, so we're fine using her. What about ashat? Mm -hmm. is holding right and if we didn't know that right so we're doing these live sort of translations stop that we'll go back my go-to was often the Klingit verb dictionary this was usually my go-to i would go down shut i would look for shot go to the Klingit side which is the best side go down to <laughs> sh I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then we go down here. Yes, shot. There was an L. Ush shot. That L right before the shot tells you what the classifier is. The classifier can switch in a verb, but if that classifier switches from this, what they used to write as ya, and what we now write as zero, to L, that's a whole different verb. If you change the classifier group, that's a different verb. It's important to remember. So if you said, do yeti, I was shot, that's, I would think of it as she caught her child, like the child fell off the table and she caught it like a hero. But if you say, a shot, she's holding on to it. So they're a little bit different, right? Catching and holding. But this one is also to like, if you, you could go to jail and that could be the same verb, right? So, or someone could be restraining someone and that's the same verb. Is that a great question about chat that I was looking at this verb engagement and I'm not sure if this catch on the list of the um, huh? would be pertaining to fish as well, like what you say, you know, caught a fish, catch a fish. That's a really good question. Because we've been looking at a whole, I think it's been fishing a long time. So of course we got 20 verbs for fishing. Because they're like, oh, are you like fishing with a rock? Are you fishing with a line? Are you fishing with a net? Are you dip netting? Are you raking the herring? Are you putting strings of halibut hooks together? Are you gaffing it? Are you spearing it? And so you'd have one for everyone. But I would probably say, when I heard a speaker say this, he said, ah, plain, ah, keutzit. That's the verb I thought you said. You fished it. 
but that has a hook, so I don't, I don't know. But this would be like, uh, if you said, I would think you reached into the river and you grabbed that fish and maybe just held it there. I don't know. But it doesn't really imply like catching and bringing it home to eat it. But I'll put together a fish thing so we can do a whole bunch of fishing stuff. That'd be good. Could Hunting's easier for some reason, huh? Right. Does shot imply with the hands? Yeah, like holding. I think holding and grabbing is the key sort of. So each of these, the verb root shot has meaning. And it's usually like for this one, I would say the meaning is more like holding on to something. But then the classifier, by changing the classifier, now you're saying, are you catching it? Are you holding it? And so it sometimes it just sort of it's called a classifier because sometimes it's classifying that meaning to say, okay, I'm not, I didn't see it, I'm watching it, I didn't hear it, I'm listening to it. That's when the very good examples of when the classifier will switch. It's the same verb root to hear or to make noise, but you'd say awa ach, they listened to it, or they heard it, awsa ach, they listened to it. So here she is. We got all the parts. Your, your paternal aunt is that her, their child, they are holding them or it. How do we put it together now? Into the thinged, from, through the thinged brain into English word order. You just gotta, and for this, you gotta, whatever, wherever that up way is, look right to the left. And that's saying, is it that thing? Would you want to read that like in order in English? How would you think it? Reorder it as how it would sound if you were to say the same thing in English. Mm -hmm. Is that your father's sister? I guess your aunt? holding her child? Yes. What if I wanted to say, is your auntie holding her child? Well, paternal or maternal? Let's we'll stick with the same, same auntie. Um, that child? Holding her child. Her child. Yeah, that works. A do yadi akwe a shat iat. So there's a number of things. One, the akwe should move from right here to after yadi. But also, and here's a here's a good tip for Tengit, the word order is often negotiable. In Hawaii, they say they they call them he'e, the octopus tentacles. They say each of these things is a tentacle, and that octopus can put them wherever they want. And think it is like that with a lot of things. It ought to get the a shot. Those are the parts and then akwe. They can move around. The akwe should come after whatever it's asking. The most important thing should come first. So you could say it ought to get the akwe a shot. But I would think the preferred word, word order do get the akwe a shot it ought. And that way, you know, the person listening is like, oh, her, is that her child? She's holding, oh, my aunt. Then it sort of gets put together in the finger brain. Um, ah. Why would you put, not put a shot at the end where the verb frequently ends up? So to say, do yeti a quick the art a shot? Because now it gets confusing who's doing what. So even though thing it, builds the pronouns right into the verb. A shut is technically them, they, hold. That's the word order, it's built right into them. You can't remove those pronouns once they're already there. Not really. But then there's also, when you talk about a sentence order, it gets really interesting. Because within the verb, you get the object, the subject, the verb, non-negotiable, cannot move. Cannot move. 
when you start specifying the nouns, you start usually with who's doing the thing and then who it's happening to. And so it reverses. So usually if you, if you said, I would think your father loves your, my father loves my mother. That's how I would interpret that. The first one you say is the one who does it. But the reason for that is coming back to this idea of front-loading. Klingit usually tells you who's doing the thing. And then you just assume that's the one who's doing the verbs. The Raven stories are a really good example. That's how the, a lot of those stories start. Okay, Raven's going to be doing all the things, but then they'll tell you when it switches. So then the, you'll be through the story and say, uh, That mink, uh, it went down into the water, swam down the water. So, but just by putting, now I know in my brain, oh, they're switching. It's someone else who's going to be doing stuff now. Okay. And how do we translate the last part? Oh. I know we cover a lot of stuff. It's okay. We'll keep, you know, a slow walk, and then sometimes we'll jump way, and we're going to, like, build up to all those things. Real. Is it no, that is my maternal aunt? Yes. So that's on my, that's on my same clan side. Aunt, other side. You're a raven, that's an eagle. You're a wolf, that's a crow, right? The ah. Uh. Clock is maternal aunt. Yes, clock is maternal aunt. And it's a generational thing. Like if your clan is Anachtedi, all those Anachtedi women who are your mother's generation, they're all your clock. It's not biological, it's clan. Awesome. You guys rock. Thursday, what I'd like to start with is just share four sentences you found or wrote about birds. They don't have to be complicated. It's just sort of fun, just sort of taking a dive in. You can find them in the verb dictionary. It doesn't matter if it's from another source and you're just writing it down. We're just here to find stuff, share it, think about it. If you found eight sentences, pick the four that you like. And we'll just sort of talk about it. Okay. Well, cheese, Johan, Ukecha, on Thursday. Finish cheese. Finish cheese. Get a dog, then. Dog, then. Finish cheese. Cheese. Finish cheese. Ziagen.